Have you ever heard of the river of life? In the book of Revelation, it says that in heaven, there's going to be river of the waters of life. Well, what if I told you that there's actually going to be a river of life here on planet Earth? When Jesus comes back, there will be streams in the desert of Israel. This is an ancient prophecy you do not want to miss here on Scripture of the day. I've got a river of life flowing out of me. Makes the lame to walk and the blind to see. So it was really hard for me to realize the Old Testament we have today is not the same Bible Jesus used. I mean, I was shocked when I found out that in our English translations, the books of the Bible are in a different order. There's not even the same number of books. Like, I was blown away. I was like, I went to church growing up. I went to Bible college. You're telling me there's not 39 books in the Old Testament? You see, Jesus, he didn't have an Old Testament. There was no Old and New Testament. There was just the scriptures, the writings. And Jesus wanted to open the eyes of his disciples so that they could see how he was revealed in the ancient prophecies. And he explained to them that he was in the law, the prophets, and the Psalms. He broke the scriptures at that time into three categories. This is the Bible according to Jesus. It's often referred to as the Hebrew Bible, the Bible how the Jews had it in a collection and somehow it got changed to be our Old Testament today. So I wanna take you through the law, the prophets and the Psalms or sometimes it's referred to as the writings. What are these three sections of the Bible according to Jesus? Well, the law is the Torah written by Moses, the five scrolls. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. This is the book of the law that Moses passed on to Joshua, that Joshua was supposed to never let this book of the law depart from his mouth. He was supposed to lead the people by teaching them the law. And then Joshua is actually the beginning of the prophets. There were no major and minor prophets. In fact, there were eight books that they referred to as the prophets. Joshua, Judges, Samuel, and Kings. Yes, that's right. No first and second Samuel. No first and second Kings. None of those things. Joshua, Judges, Samuel, Kings, Isaiah, Jeremiah, Ezekiel, the 12. Those are the prophets. Eight books are the prophets. And, and we, we refer to them as the, the minor prophets. There were no major or minor prophets. They had what we know as the minor prophets, but they had it all together in one book of the 12. And then the writings began with the Psalms. And it went Psalms, Proverbs, Job. And then there was this uh, Megaloth co collection, five scrolls. Song of Songs, Ruth, Lamentations, Ecclesiastes, and Esther. All those books were together. The five scrolls, the Megaloth. And then at the end, it was Daniel, Ezra, and Nehemiah were together as one book. And then Chronicles. Chronicles was the last book of the scriptures at the time of Jesus Christ. Now, maybe you're thinking, what does it really matter? The order of the books or the number of the books? Well, I just gotta tell you that it's really mattered to me. When I started reading the Bible according to Jesus, when I really embraced the Hebrew Bible and started to think of it that way, it gave me the confidence to say, hey, church, let's go through the law. Hey, let's read through the prophets here on scripture of the day. It's been a revival for my soul and I've never loved reading the Bible more than I do right now here with you. And so today's chapters are Ezekiel 47 and 48. And it's an epic prophecy that there is gonna be a river in the desert. There's gonna be a river that goes from the temple in Jerusalem all the way down into the wilderness of Judah to the Dead Sea. So if you ever go to Israel, you'll start driving from Jerusalem out into the wilderness and you'll notice these like valleys or stream beds where it looked like there should be a river there, but it's just completely dry. And you get out there, way out there, there is absolutely nothing 
It's a dry and weary land where there is no water except the Dead Sea right there, this very unique body of water where nothing lives, just this salty, dense body of water. And then there's this little oasis and Getty out there in the middle of the wilderness. And when I read this prophecy in Ezekiel 47, that when Jesus comes back, he's not just gonna do miracles like he did the first time to heal people's physical bodies. He's gonna heal the geography of the land. Like he's gonna do miracles to create like rivers where right now it's a desert. That's what it says in Ezekiel 47. If you haven't read this prophecy, you really need to check this out because it's saying that from the temple, there's gonna start this little trickle. And I love how it's revealed here. It's like he starts walking in this, this little trickle that's coming from the temple and it's going out towards the, the desert of Arabah, which is the, the plains leading out there towards Moab, which is it's the wilderness of Judah as we would know it today. And it's, first it's this little trickle coming from the temple and then it's ankle deep and then it gets up to knee deep and then it's waist deep. And then it's so deep, it's a river you couldn't even pass. You'd have to start swimming. And he gets up out of the river and there's trees all along the river just growing from all the, the river of life. And there's all kinds of fish, like every kind of fish is just going in this river. That's the prophecy we have here in Ezekiel 47. I gotta tell you, I believe this is a literal prophecy of scripture that someday there will be a river flowing from the temple in Jerusalem out to the Dead Sea and it will resurrect the Dead Sea to life. That's what it says right here. When it says that it's going to go out in Ezekiel 47, if you, if you read this through, and I really hope you already have read it or you're opening and you're turning there with me right now, because when it says the water goes there, that the waters of the sea may become fresh so everything will live where the river goes. like. I realize the Dead Sea is one of the greatest setups of all time. Like the Dead Sea, if you ever go there, it's one of the most international places I've ever been. Like people want Dead Sea mud to put on their skin. I don't get it, but apparently it's a big deal to people all over the world. People that wear different kind of bathing suits than we wear, they're, they're there from every possible country or nation and they're getting this Dead Sea experience and they're getting this mud and you're just like, wow, I never knew the Dead Sea was worldwide famous. Here's why, it's a setup. Someday it's gonna be the fresh sea. Someday it's gonna be alive. There's gonna be a river of life that flows from the temple to the Dead Sea and the Dead Sea is gonna get resurrected. That's what it's saying here in Ezekiel 47. Now, if you think I'm making a big deal out of this prophecy of the river of life from Ezekiel 47, one to 12, well, you need to study with me how the river of life is actually a theme in this part of scripture. We're coming to the end of Ezekiel. We came back to Inspiration Point here in Corona Del Mar. This is where we began the book. Today, we finish reading it, and Ezekiel is right before the book of the 12. So we're hitting Hosea, starting tomorrow, Hosea chapter one. Let's go everybody. We're gonna start reading through these 12 prophets that they had all together as one collection. And number two of 12 is Joel. And in Joel chapter three, verse 18, it talks about those stream beds of Judah. Those, those little valleys out there. I remember once I was having lunch in Bethlehem and I was like, looks like there should be a river right here next to the restaurant we were eating at. And it says those stream beds of Judah will flow with water. This is Joel chapter three, verse 18. A fountain shall come from the house of the Lord and water the valley of Shittim. That's what it says. Like what kind of river is this that flows from the temple? And it goes down to resurrect the Dead Sea, streams of living water in the desert. And it says the Valley of Shittim, these are the plains of Moab. This is the wilderness of Judah. This is going from Jerusalem out to the east to the Dead Sea. It's saying it's gonna happen in Joel 3.18. Another one of the prophets, Zechariah chapter 14, verse eight. Because in Zechariah 14, Jesus comes back on the Mount of Olives. Do you believe Jesus is literally coming back on the Mount of Olives, just like he ascended in Acts 1? He's coming back to the same place. That's what the angels said. 
Well, if you believe that there's going to come a day that Jesus literally returns to the Mount of Olives, it says in Zechariah 14, verse 8, on that day, living waters shall flow from Jerusalem. Half of them will go to the Eastern Sea, the Dead Sea. There's also going to be some of them going to the Western Sea, the Mediterranean Sea. So it says the Mount of Olives is going to be split in two. The geography of the land is going to change and a river is going to come forth from the temple out into the wilderness towards the Dead Sea. Hey, you should also, if you're studying the river of life, go to Psalm 46. Psalm 46, and it's famous because it's the psalm that says, be still and know that I am God. You want to know why you can cease striving and know that he's God? Because he's coming back to win a war at the end of all things. And when he wins that war over all the nations, and when there's finally peace there in Jerusalem, it says in Psalm 46, verse 4, there is a river whose streams make glad the city of God. There's a river. After the victory is won and Jesus returns in the city of Jerusalem, there will be a river that will go out to a place that the whole world will have known as the Dead Sea. And when that day comes, you're going to remember the prophecy of the river of life, and you're going to think, wow, these scriptures are absolutely amazing. I can't believe that I heard about that all the way back on a YouTube video when we were reading Ezekiel 47, and I thought, oh, this is hard to figure out. And it was actually telling me the future, that Jesus is coming back, he's gonna reign in Jerusalem, and there will be a river in the desert. So the Bible can take things that seem dry and weary, like maybe what people think about the Old Testament, and it can turn them into a river of life. I've got a river.